No intro, straight onto the guides. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's this. Unlike Kiriko, Romatra is a fairly one-dimensional hero, being a hybrid poke brawl hero. This means that at the beginning of fights, in Omnic form, you will look to utilise the moderately high DPS from your Void Accelerator to soften up the enemy team, and then you look to close the distance and enter Nemesis form. Generally speaking, utilise your shield to suck up damage up close and to allow you to sustain a Nemesis form, alongside using your projectile slow to aggress onto any enemies. A quick thing before I move on, I gave my script for this video to former Overwatch League coach Spilo, who made a ton of edits to perfect the script. Check out the stuff down below. Romantra's weapon, the Black Hole V2, makes Romantra shoot out small projectiles at 1500 RPM, dealing 4.5 damage per projectile, meaning Romantra deals 112.5 DPS. Unlike other poke tank projectiles like Arita's gun, it also has no fall off. There isn't too much to note with Romantra's weapon, other than the accuracy required to use the weapon in close range and up against squishy heroes. Pair this alongside the incredibly fast fire rate, which by the way, is the fastest firing weapon in Overwatch, and this means that you have to pace your shots when fighting up close and against hard to hit targets. In other words, you need trigger discipline. Don't just hold down M1 and pray that you hit your shots. A lot of Tracer, Soldier and Sojourn players end up doing this, and they dump half their clip into thin air. Take the extra half a second to land your shots up close. Aside from that, you will generally be using the Void Accelerator at the beginning of fights to soften up the enemy team before you then go into Nemesis form to deal damage at a closer range. Because of your slowing ability and the fact that you do deal headshot damage, you can look to hit headshots up close, especially if your Nemesis form is on cooldown. Speaking of your Nemesis form, Ramatra's alternative form, Big Ass Hitbox, makes Romatra transform into a bigger Omnic with 150 added armor, lasting 8 seconds, changing your attacks into pummels, and allowing you to block incoming damage. Since your pummels and block are one-dimensional and work in tandem with your nemesis form, I will also couple them here. Romatra's pummels deal about 60 damage, fire once every 0.6 seconds, meaning you deal 100 DPS, and it can travel through shields. Romatra's block also reduces frontal damage taken by about 75%, reduces movement speed by 50%, and you can use it for as long as you want. The most important thing to note with actually using your nemesis form is the timing at which you use it. In short, just make sure you use nemesis form when you're up close. You basically keep the same DPS when switching forms, but now you gain significantly more sustain thanks to your armor and block. Speaking of your block, it seems quite intuitive and basic on paper, and surely it is considering you just block when you're receiving significant damage, but you can actually proactively use your block. In other words, look to block sources of big burst damage. A Soldier Railgun, a Soldier Helix, Hanzo Storm Arrows, Drunk Rat Concussions, etc. It's really, really easy for you to just turn your brain off and start pummeling, but good block management means you preserve more HP, and by preserving more HP, you can actually stay in the fight for longer, and therefore you can actually do more. Speaking of your pummel, try and prioritize squishy heroes rather than just pummeling the enemy tank. Especially in Romatra mirrors, it can be really tempting to just solely pummel the enemy Romatra, but if you can land pummels to any healers that might be behind him, like a Kiriko, Brig, Moira or Lucio, you might actually end up confirming a kill. Romarcha's second ability, mid, makes Romarcha deploy a temporary 4 second shield that has 1000 HP with a 15 second cooldown. Now we start getting into the more advanced, complex pieces of kit from Romarcha. Here are 6 key principles to help you use Romarcha's shield. Firstly, line of sight. This means that you want to use Romatra's shield to block lines of sight from the enemy team. For example, on Lee Jang Night Market, set your holding point against a fairly common Winston Ana dive. When the Winston dives your backline, you use your shield to block the line of sight that the Ana has, so she can't throw anti-nades or sleep darts, and then you go to town on the Winston, pummeling him in Nemesis form. Secondly, Absorption. This means that you use your shield, similar to an Arisa shield, to tank a bunch of damage in close range. For example, on Rialto first point attack, say you're pushing the corner, you'd pop the shield on the corner and then switch to Nemesis form to give yourself as much sustain as possible. Now, if we want to go a step further, we can combine this usage with the previous one and place the shield between the Reinhardt and his backline. This way, you can block any incoming damage and possibly any healing as well. Here's an example of me actually doing this on King's Row, where I turn the corner aggressively and shield off the Hanzo Mercy Kiriko. Unfortunately, they weren't running Arno or Moira, so I couldn't block off any healing, but the point still stands. 
Do note that the main downside with this type of shield is that it could be easy to sidestep compared to if you just place it in front of you. Thirdly, rotation. This means that you pop your shield to move from position A to position B safely. For example, on Soccer Royale, you pop your shield on high ground to block damage so you and maybe a teammate can safely move to contesting high ground. Fourthly, Reaction. This refers to the usage in Ramacho's gameplay trailer where he blocks High Noon. Essentially, you use your shield reactively to what's going on around you, whether that be a High Noon or a Roadhog cooking one of your key players, etc. The penultimate point is flanking. This means that you pop your shield to help you and your team control a key flank. For example, on Route 66 attack, you pop your shield by the lorry to help your team take that space. And finally, the D stands for dueling. Similar to Sigma's shield, if you find yourself in a pinch up close without Nemesis form, you can pop your shield by your feet and weave on either side of the shield to shield dance. For March's third ability, extremely underwhelming, makes your marcher fire a nano ball, exploding when it hits the ground, dealing 15 DPS, slowing movement speed by 40% in a 4 meter radius, lasting 3 seconds with a 12 second cooldown. The marcher can use this ability in either forms. There's two key uses for your vortex, aggressive and defensive. Aggressive uses involve closing distance to keep range against the enemy team. Referring back to one of my earlier examples on Rialto attack, you could toss your vortex to the side or just behind the enemy Reinhardt so it's harder for them to retreat and they have to tank your pummels. The other use of your vortex is for defensive purposes. Again, referring back to Rialto, if the enemy Rhinoc comp just decided to speed straight onto you with either Speed Amp or Kiriko Alt, your Vortex could greatly prevent that. You could also use it as a peeling tool to toss onto your backline when they get dove, but the small 4 meter radius makes it quite easy to just dodge out of. If you don't know what peeling means, it's just a synonym for protection. You could also use it as a pharmacy counter, but as Flats discovered, the vertical height of the ability is just too low. Not to mention, the radius isn't very big, and would you really want to be saving a 12 second cooldown for a situation that might not even occur? Probably not. Ramacha's ultimate does literally nothing makes Ramacha enter Nemesis form, creating an energy swarm around him. It lasts 3 seconds, but the duration is infinite as long as an enemy attached. It also deals 30 DPS and is blocked by shields. Because of the relatively low damage that Ramacha's ultimate deals, and that is the only effect the ultimate has, its usage is quite simple. Just pop your ultimate when the team fight begins. In other words, when you're up close and personal. For example, when you're pushing onto point on Nepal village, when you want to push onto point and take space, that's when you'd want to pop Annihilation. Using it at this time is kind of a win-win for you, because if the enemy team don't want to be in your Annihilation, meaning you gain some free space, and if the enemy team do decide to commit, they're constantly taking some form of damage, meaning you'll have an upper hand. You can also obviously sustain your Annihilation by blocking when enemies are right up close. You'll see this in a bunch of overtime situations, or situations where the enemy team absolutely need to touch points. For example, if a team want to deny the enemy team a checkpoint, that could be a great time to pop Annihilation. Another use is to extend the time you stay in Nemesis form. You can basically permanently stay in Nemesis form for the entire team fight if you first pop it, then you use your Annihilation, which should last for at least 8 seconds if you had good usage, then you pop another Nemesis form right afterwards. Just make sure that you use your shield beforehand, since you'll have a decent amount of time to where you won't be in Omnic form. Maybe you could pop Annihilation if your backline are being dove to deter heroes like Genji and Tracer from diving in, but they have so much burst damage that it's kind of not worth using Annihilation, especially if they've got some form of healing with them, and especially if they're competent at the game. Now onto Ramarch's playstyle, positioning and compositions. I actually think your playstyle is very similar to Orisa, which would make sense, considering you're both Puck Brawl hybrid heroes. This means that you'll either be harassing frontline or trading backline. I'll elaborate more on this in the following section, but essentially, harassing frontline involves using your cooldowns and high damage on Ramatra to put as much pressure on the enemy tank as possible, and trading backline involves focusing on dueling the enemy backline. Generally speaking, against tanks who can punish you, like Sigma or Reinhardt, you can shift into the frontline matchup, and against tanks who you can't punish as much, like Winston, you might want to trade backlines instead. Now, there is some complexity here, because normally trading backlines is a good thing, but with Ramatra having lower mobility than both Orisa and Reinhardt, he's probably not going to be chasing down a Zen in the back. So, to simplify things, if you are actually able to get on top of squishy heroes, for example, a Kiriko teleporting to a Winston, go for the squishies. But keep in mind that you might not always be able to do so. With positioning, just stick to corners. Corners allow you to stabilize and regain your cooldowns, there's no reason to not play around them. As Spilo states in one of his edits, this is important as outside of Burning Nemesis form, you don't have consistent damage mitigation. It's like the crappy Junker Queen mains who stand in the open and get their shout forced by random crap. And with compositions, 
Just don't play him with dive. Judging by the stats card I made for him, you can clearly see his lack of mobility. Instead, Ramacho has enough flexibility to slide into any poke comp, any brawl comp, or any mixture of those two. Now for Ramacho's tanker matchups. Ramacho vs Reinhardt, a favourable matchup for Ramacho. As of the making of the script, I tweeted out how much better Ramacho is compared to Reinhardt. Ramacho has significantly more range, and up close, he actually deals more damage than Reinhardt. His nemesis form has a higher DPS of about 12, a longer range, a larger cleave, and he can use a shield before he pops his nemesis form. The only advantage Reinhardt has is his noticeably higher sustain, meaning that before you close the distance on Ramatra, you want to soften up the Reinhardt comp from range to lower his sustain. Reinhardt vs Arisa. Again, a somewhat similar case to Reinhardt. Arisa has much higher sustain than Ramatra, but Ramatra has increased damage and slightly better range. Try and force out Spear Spin or even better, Fortify from afar, and then close the distance using your shield, slow, and nemesis form to crunch the Arisa up close. Just be careful of throwing your Vortex into a Spear Spin, and do be wary that Javelin can set you quite a bit back, especially when chasing down with Nemesis form. Ramatra vs Sigma, another favourable matchup for Ramatra. The only two upper hands that Sigma has is his consistent poke damage from range, thanks to his more permanent shield, and that you can't really do anything to his accretion when you're in Nemesis form. Aside from that, Ramatra deals a higher DPS than Sigma, meaning you can easily burn his shield, there's no question that Ramatra is the better hero. Keep in mind that Sigma's grasp also does nothing against your pummels. Overall, I wouldn't be shocked to see a lot of Ramatra on Soko Royale to counter Sigma, because Ramatra is versatile enough to play from range, but to also engage in a rough brawl up close. Ramatra vs Roadhog a favourable matchup for Hog. Hog doesn't care about your shield, you have no CC to disrupt his hooks or his breather, and you don't have enough mobility to trade backlines. Instinctually, whilst making this guide, you might want to throw up your shield to block the enemy hook, but that's pretty difficult to do practically, and you'd be trading out an 8 second cooldown for a 15 second one. So in short, just hope and pray that their Roadhog doesn't flank, and beam him down with your Void Accelerator. Ramatra vs Winston, a favourable matchup for Winston. To help explain this matchup, I will first explain the Reinhardt vs Winston matchup. You see, whenever a hero like Reinhardt played against Winston, Reinhardt has enough mobility, thanks to his pin, to be able to trade out backlines or to peel for his team. Ramatra unfortunately does not have that luxury, and I think it's unlikely that a temporary shield, nemesis form, and a slowing ability will be enough to peel off a good dive. The only thing I will say is that if the enemy team are running a Lucio Moira or a Lucio Kiriko sort of dive, Ramatra may be a decent option because he has just enough range in his nemesis form to punish those healers who want to get up close to support their Winston. We just need more time to see how this matchup plays in practice. Ramatra vs Junker Queen, a slightly favourable matchup for Ramatra. Junker Queen's lackluster range and mobility give Ramatra the upper hand. You shouldn't lose from afar, and hopefully, you shouldn't lose up close. Blocker Axe Wing in Nemesis form, again, referring back to the point about blocking burst damage, and keep pummeling her from afar, and you'll force out her commanding shout. Ramatra vs Wrecking Ball, a slightly favourable matchup for Ramatra. As long as you can survive the burst damage from Ball's engage with his pile driver, you'll be good to go. And perhaps consider tossing your slow when and where he pile drives. His large hitbox should make it easy for you to use your Void Accelerator, and if their ball goes for a lot of soft engages, as in he just never uses pile drive, you could either look to punish him with your slow, or trade backlines. Ramatra vs D.Va, a map specific matchup. In short, if D.Va can control a lot of angles around Ramatra, like on King's Road third point, you're gonna have a tough time on Ramatra. However, on more linear, longer range maps, like Colosseo or Li Jiang, Ramatra's range damage and solid sustain, thanks to his block, can help Ramatra control space D.Va wants to control. Ramatra vs Doomfist, a very favourable matchup for Doomfist. Not only has Doomfist been buffed to the Wazoo, but even before the buffs, he'd still have a good matchup against Ramatra. Ramatra has no CC, his Vortex is dog shit, and Doom's high mobility and burst damage means Doom can manoeuvre quite easily around Ramatra. My, my advice, therefore, is to either try and melt the Doomfist when he engages, you're gonna have to buy some time in Nemesis form trading backlines, praying that their Doomfist doesn't kill anyone in your backline. Ramatra vs Zarya, a favourable matchup for Ramatra. Sure, if Zarya is on high charge, beaming you down, and you don't even have Nemesis form to block, you're not gonna have much fun. But in any other scenario, thanks to Ramatra's higher sustain and more consistent damage, he just kind of wins against Zarya. If she is on high charge, keep your distance and engage her with your nemesis form, looking to block and draw aggro. Zarya's relatively low sustain means she can only be aggressive on high charge for so long. And that's it for the guides. This should be the best Ramatra guide on YouTube, especially on release, so I hope you found something useful. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and if this video helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.